Earth. You've seen it. It's the planet you're on right now. Well, unless you're watching this in space. I highly doubt it, but it's not impossible. In that case, hello astronauts and or aliens. Earth may be a very familiar planet, but not all Earths are created equal. Many fictional universes have their versions of Earth be different from our world in various ways. Sometimes it's a small difference, other times it's enormous. And Steven Universe has one of the most interesting versions of this. Why? Well, there are numerous substantial differences from our world, but the world still seems to be the same. It's like you used the wrong amount of ingredients, but your cake still came out perfectly. Maybe that wasn't the best analogy, I don't know. Well, today I'll be comparing Steven Universe's Earth to ours, outlining not only the differences, but also what we have in common. Some of the differences are minor, but others... Oh boy. So this video will be less of a theory and more of a documentation. Before I start, I want to give a quick shout out to the Steven Universe wiki, I never would have noticed some of this stuff otherwise. Without further ado, let's begin. So here's a map of all structures that were originally built on Earth. All told, this probably only accounts for maybe 5% of what was originally planned. Right off the bat, it's clear that this version of Earth has some significant geographical differences from our Earth. All of them could be considered the result of Homeworld's colonization attempt 5 to 6,000 years ago. Well, actually not all of them. As you can see here, a large chunk of Africa is connected to South America, and that's a difference that goes back way further than a few thousand years because it means Pangaea broke up differently. Actually, this whole continent is called Pangaea. Africa and South America began splitting apart during the early Cretaceous period, 140 million years ago. So this Earth was way different from ours long before the gems showed up. Also, Central America seems to just not exist. Well, at least not on the show. In the art book, it's kinda there. Either way, North America is further south than in real life. This becomes obvious if we draw a line between Greenland and the British Isles. Oh, excuse me, not Greenland. Blue Land. Blue Land is supposedly farther east than Greenland is, but I honestly don't really see it. While the size and shape of Australia was affected by the gems, its overall position is tilted compared to our world, which presumably also stemmed from continental drift. The final example of land being in the wrong place is the Philippines, which are further west than in real life. Though interestingly, a single island appears to still be in the right place. So those are the changes that go back to dinosaur times. Millions of years go by, and eventually the diamonds found Earth. I don't know if there was any reason why this planet specifically was designated to be Pink's colony, but it's good that Pink found the planet with life worth protecting. The geographical differences caused by gems can be attributed to lapis lazuli since their whole shtick is terraforming. With lapises, it's natural that they'd flood and sink various areas since a planet that's mostly covered in water is basically their playground. I mean, the planet eventually would have been hollowed out entirely, so I suppose this was just stage one. Asia is pretty clearly the most affected continent. A lot of Russia is now occupied by the Tunguska Sea with the galaxy warp at the center. Considering the middle of Russia is just gone, I doubt it's one country in modern times. It's probably split into east and west halves at least. Oh, and it's not just the main part of Russia that's missing land. Kaliningrad is just not there either. I think the crew universe is just trying to spite Russia. The Tunguska Sea also appears to take up parts of modern day Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and maybe even a little bit of China. India has been roughly cut in half, with the southern half becoming the Indian Islands. The southeast one is probably Sri Lanka. A lot of southern China has been submerged and Taiwan is missing entirely. Japan looks like it's connected to mainland Asia, but that could just be an illusion created by the white outlines. Indonesia is slightly further north and many of its islands are shaped a little differently and a chunk of Turkey is missing. But don't think that every difference involves more water. The Red, Caspian, and Black Seas are all smaller than in real life. There's also these islands between Africa and Pangaea which don't exist in real life. Moving down, Australia has also been cut in half with the western part dubbed New Australia. New Zealand looks slightly bigger than in real life. Slightly. What's left of Africa is pretty much the same except for there being a little more land here thanks to the smaller Red Sea. Europe is mostly intact, though there are some small differences. Aside from the aforementioned absence of Kaliningrad, the differences all relate to islands. Ireland is smaller, Corsica and Sardinia are a single island, the Balearic Islands are replaced by these ones which are further south, and Iceland has melted. Ireland actually looks normal in Buddy's book, but once again I'm invoking the rule of 2 out of 3, so we'll ignore that. South America slash Pangaea looks pretty similar to real life aside from the obvious, though there's a little less land here and a little more here. As for North America, Victoria Island is not an island at all, but Florida is. Several Caribbean islands have coalesced into one, and Southern Mexico and whatever's left of Central America have become islands. Lastly, when seen from space, neither the Arctic nor Antarctic are covered in ice, though that could be an animation error considering the Great North is still pretty snowy. Well, that pretty much covers the geographical differences. Now it's time we move on to history. I 
know we've been journeying for many months, but surely we'll run into something soon. The ocean can't be that big. <laughs> there he is! Hi, Steven! All right, all right. Pangea splits up millions of years ago by gems show up, gems terraform, gems build stuff, gems get corrupted. Oh, look, we've reached the start of civilization. This is obviously an alternate history scenario, but despite all the changes that occurred in ancient times and before that, the modern world still resembles ours. The Steven Universe Western civilization is a lot like ours and traces back to the Greeks and Romans, the latter of which definitely existed. And the Roman Empire wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for the Greeks, so ancient Greeks existed by extension. As for religion, Judaism exists in this world, but Christianity might not, considering Christmas doesn't exist here. Religion as a whole doesn't seem to be as significant in Steven Universe as in reality. Christmas is said to not exist, and Halloween definitely doesn't exist. I think the only holiday which clearly does occur is New Year's in maximum capacity, but that doesn't mean there's no other holidays. The United States definitely exists, but the question on religion means some of the original colonies may have been founded for different reasons. And we have evidence of this considering the founder of Beach City set sail to the Americas seemingly just so he can make something for himself. So many of the colonies would have been different than in real life, hence why the states are different. But the American Revolution must have still happened the same way or at least in a similar way. Speaking of colonialism, Africa's reduced size probably affected colonization in some way. It would have been really nice if Europe decided to stay in Europe, but I doubt that happened. The borders of some of these countries are clearly different, but I'd imagine that many more differ in some way, especially because World War II never happened. No World War II, of course, means no Cold War. I mean, it wouldn't have happened anyway since, you know, no Russia. Although World War II and the Cold War didn't happen, nuclear weapons still exist. Or at least nuclear accidents do. I told my parents you have a nuclear family. Nuclear? Sure, they make stuff blow up sometimes, but that's because they're magic, not radioactive! No Cold War means no space race, so while the United States still made it to the moon in Steven Universe as evidenced by the replica Apollo lunar module in the barn, it was probably later than 1969. Anyway, one question I've always had about Steven Universe is whether regular gems exist, aka non-sentient ones. It's never been addressed on the show, but the answer is yes, they do exist in this world. There's a jewelry shop next to the movie theater in Lion 2 the movie. We don't exactly know what this shop sells, but it's probably jewelry of some sort. Genius deduction, I know. Maybe Steven can get some real versions of the fusions, because even though the fusions are named after other gems, they're not actually transforming into other gems. Maybe. I don't actually know. How does fusion work? Should I discuss that? Yeah, in the next Steven Universe video, I'll talk about fusion. I can use this chart I made. Another oddity is the fact that many of these gems in our world are named for Earth-related things, like Sugalite, which was named after the Petrologist who discovered it in 1944. So how do they get their names in this universe? For now, it's something to discuss at a later time. Well, I gotta drive over to the next state, Keystone. You mean the Keystone State? Right, the state named Keystone. Now let us examine the different countries on this Earth. Only about a dozen have been shown or mentioned, many of which are just in passing, so we really don't know how this alternate geography affected politics on a worldwide level. Nonetheless, there are still several countries we can talk about. First up is the one we know the most about, the United States. All 39 states. The main state on the show is Delmarva, named after the real-life Delmarva Peninsula, which contains Delaware, part of Maryland, and part of Virginia. It's never made entirely clear, but the lower number of states leads me to believe that these three states are one in Seaman Universe. Or maybe these four states, since West Virginia might not have split away. Either way, Washington DC would be located entirely within Delmarva. Pennsylvania is called Keystone, but otherwise seems to be the same. West Keystone is shown to be a separate state and presumably represents Ohio. New Jersey is just called Jersey, and New York is called Empire. Empire City is geographically in the same place as New York City, but culturally is a combination of NYC, Las Vegas, and Paris. Providence Island is mentioned in the final episode. Providence is the capital of Rhode Island in real life, so is Providence Island just Rhode Island? Maybe, but we don't know that Providence Island isn't just the name of an island. I think that the lower number of states means that all of New England could be one state. Florida, though not connected to the rest of the US, is still a state called Florida Island. Jamie mentions that he went to Kansas, which is the movie making home of Stevens America, but he didn't mean the state Kansas, he meant Kansas City. Kansas City was originally just named Kansas, but the name was changed to Kansas City when the state was formed. So this state has a different name here. The University of Jayhawk is presumably in this state, considering the real-life University of Kansas is home of the Jayhawks. Hawaii is mentioned in maximum capacity, and I see no reason to believe it's any different from our Hawaii. Alaska, however, probably isn't part of the US and is instead in the Great North. Remember, Alaska is part of the US in our world because of Russia, who in this world might not have had the resources to expand to the Americas. 
Baked Alaska is mentioned in one episode, but that doesn't automatically mean it's a state. So without Alaska and combining states into Delmarva and New England, we have 41 states. So how do we get to 39? Well, anyone's guess could be right, but I'll just go with the simplest option, combining the Dakotas and Carolinas. All these other states might have different names as well, possibly from their nicknames, as is the case for Keystone and Empire. The US government system is the same, since Stephen once said Connie's gonna grow up and become president one day. Aww. Money looks different, though. All denominations have a Ben Franklin-style snake on one side and a diamond on the other. A diamond that looks suspiciously like pink diamond. Hmm. Coins do have people on them, but not the same as in real life. For instance, quarters have a woman on them. The FBI has a different name and logo, though they still had the same Winners Don't Use Drugs campaign. Another organization with a different name is the MPAA, which is called the Motion Picture Board of Movies. American culture seems to be largely the same with baseball and hot dogs and whatnot. Canada is called the Great North and is generally pretty cold, just like our Canada. The Great North's flag is green instead of red, and the country is the source of everyone's favorite TV show, Camp Pining Hearts. Somehow the rejects at Camp Claude fail to recognize the superior pair that is Pierre and Percy. A lot of Mexico consists of islands, so much so that the country is called Aqua Mexico. Probably. I feel like Steven's comment shouldn't be taken at 100% face value, and the world map seems to be calling the water Aqua Mexico, but for now we'll say Aqua Mexico is a country. As for Europe, the only countries directly referred to are Germany and Drop Be Dead and Bulgaria and Sadie Killer. We know the United Kingdom, or at least England, exists thanks to the US and Great North. Plus, there are several characters with British accents, one of which is even human. We know Spain exists not just because of Aqua Mexico, but also because of Stephen's disguise name in the zoo, and Italy presumably exists because of pizza. Korea is a single country, which makes sense since World War II didn't happen. Culturally, it very much resembles modern day South Korea, even using the same flag. These red t-shirts reference real ones which supported the South Korean football, aka soccer, team in the 2002 World Cup. There's also that Korean exercise tape. Likewise, Japan is culturally similar, with video games and anime being common. Plus, Kanye says a Japanese phrase in one episode. Although it's not in the right place, we know the Philippines are culturally similar because of large Zube roles. India is geographically different, but again we know it's culturally similar thanks to Kanye and her family. There's also Dewar Airlines, which is a fictional airline, but the plane is real. It's a 747-200M combi plane, like this one. On that note, Andy's plane is a Bristol F-2B, which isn't important to the segment, but I thought it was worth mentioning anyway. One of the biggest mysteries is Ghana, where Nanafwa and Kofi are from. It's a mystery because if we look at a map, we see that Ghana is in the part of Africa that's on the other side of the Atlantic. So was Ghana a country in Pangaea, or is it a country in a different part of Africa with the same name? The latter seems more likely. By the way, Nanafwa is based on Theodosia Oko, who designed the flag of Ghana and is also the grandmother of Ian Jones' party. Pretty cool. Lastly, some sort of conflict in the Middle East is mentioned in Shirt Club, so countries similar to modern day ones probably exist. Though because of the religion thing mentioned earlier, that conflict is probably solely related to oil. So those are all the countries that have either been referenced in the show, or at least we know exist. That's not to say any of the countries that haven't been referenced don't exist, and you're free to share your interpretations. I would, but this segment is running a bit long and I have to get on to the next one. We're going to see Mike Kroll. He's got that real garage vibe. Songs about being nostalgic for the suburbs. Alright, now it's time to discuss real world stuff that explicitly exists in this world. There are probably more than you'd expect. For the record, it can be hard to decide whether or not something is a thing that actually exists in real life or if it's a parody and or equivalent. So you may not agree with me on which thing should be in this segment or the next. Let's start off with real people. For historical figures, there's Caligula, as already shown, and Shakespeare, who was mentioned in Last One Out of Beach City. As for more recent people, there's a Leonard Nimoy poster in Keep Beach City Weird, the Marx Brothers are mentioned in We Need to Talk, and Danny DeVito appears in So Many Birthdays. Okay, not really. The second anti-racism PSA mentions some real people. Even though it isn't canon, it's worth mentioning because Lewis Latimer and Thomas Edison presumably still exist in canon because there are indeed light bulbs. But seriously, we do need to stop giving Edison credit that he doesn't deserve. There are two musicians who are mentioned by name, Mike Kroll in Last One Out of Each City and Emily King in Bismuth Casual. Emily King also sings Steven Universe Future's ending theme Being Human and is probably also the in-universe singer of that song since Steven seemingly listens to it on his radio. Bismuth Casual also has an Avril Lavigne t-shirt, there's a Queen record in The Message, and Greg wears a Pink Floyd t-shirt in this drawing. I mean, technically a light prism doesn't automatically mean Pink Floyd, but really is there any other reason for Greg to own this shirt? Oh wait, these drawings might not be canon, so I guess you can ignore this if you want. <sighs> it's fine. Damn it, now I'm getting down on myself. Hey, don't be like that. 
There's some famous literature, which isn't directly referred to, but can be identified by their covers. Connie holds a wrinkle in time in the first intro and reads The Catcher in the Rye and Bubble Buddies, and the copy of Lord of the Flies can be found in maximum capacity. Moving on, there's an X-Files poster in Keep Each City Weird, a copy of Sailor Moon in House Guest, and a drawing of an at, -AT from Star Wars in The Good Lars. The Lurch is fictional, but it has the real UA logo and seemingly also the Warner Bros. logo. Interestingly, Cartoon Network seems to exist here. Yeah, freaky. Sadie has a plush of Gunther from Adventure Time, and there's an OKKO OK arcade game at Funland. I'm not acknowledging this, though. That doesn't count. But there's also an Attack the Light game in the arcade. Nah, it's probably just a completely different game with the same name. But what about that gag in Steven's Dream? Oh, I should stop here before I go off the deep end. Speaking of video games, several Nintendo consoles have been shown, the 64, GameCube, and various handhelds. We see a Mario Super Mushroom in Laser Light Cannon, though the franchise might not be called Mario here, more on that later. Many episodes show Steven with copies of Animal Crossing and The Wind Waker, Amethyst Room has a Mario question block and an Animal Crossing gyroid, and everyone says this poster in Greg's van is K.K. Slider from Animal Crossing, but I think it might be a coincidence. Let me know what you think. As for non-Nintendo video games, Steven has a PS2 alongside Katamari and In Dreams, and Amethyst Room also has a Dragon Quest slime. Moving from games to apps, several real ones appear on Paradox Tablet and Too Short to Ride. Icons for Facebook, Instagram, Tinder, Vine, Tumblr, and The Sims are all there. Ritz Luxury Hotels are mentioned in Keystone Motel, AP Classes are mentioned in Bismuth Casual, there's Hoi Fong Food Sriracha in The Cooking with Lion Short, and there's a Visa card in Sadie Killer. One of the phone numbers Pearl has comes with a Gmail, however, Boogle is mentioned in a later episode, which can only mean that this Gmail is not referring to Google Mail, but to the original Gmail, Garfield Mail. Brilliant. Brilliant. There are a couple of things that are alluded to, but not directly referred to. This means it's possible that they exist, or they could simply be parody slash equivalents. For instance, this clip from Onion Trade implies that DuckTales exists here. How do you move in this stuff? Try and act like a rich duck. What does that mean? Similarly, Jurassic Park, or at least a Jurassic Park-like movie, exists. If we stand perfectly still, it won't see us. I saw it in a movie once. And this serves as the perfect transition to our last section. I think that movie was about dinosaurs. I've got Polly Polly, Toppler, and Conquerors of Eldermore. Not that sorry, don't wake father figure, and non-invasive operation. I think that one's missing a couple organs. Alright, normally this stuff would simply be considered parodies, but for a show like this, they could be considered parallel equivalents to real world stuff. I already mentioned Boogle, but there's plenty of other stuff. For example, we've got Sadie's movie collection. In Sadie Killer, we see equivalents of Nosferatu, Evil Dead 2, and Reanimator, and in Are You My Dad, we see an equivalent of Ghost, which is not a horror movie, but the reference is clear. Video games. The Nintendo consoles actually have different names. For instance, the GameCube is called the Dolphin, which is the GameCube's real codename. That's where Isle Delfino came from. Anyway, the games don't exactly match up. They seem to be playing Super Mario World on the Dolphin. Well, it might not be called that. Pikmin is called Pikemen, so all Nintendo games could have different names. We also have stuff like Lose Estate and Smash Pals Deluxe. Steel Cog and Forever Darkness are presumably Metal Gear and Eternal Darkness. Sumi replaces Sony and Carpcom replaces Capcom. Teens of Rage, of course, references Streets of Rage, and Meat Beat Mania is the equivalent of Samba de Amigo. Connie's computer has parodies of classic PC games, Age of Empire, Civilization, and Crusader Kings. There's also what I presume to be Google Chrome, as well as versions of Microsoft Word, Skype, and Steam. Not all of Peridot's apps are real, though. There's TubeTube, and she vents her thoughts by sending cheeps. This poster in Onion's room gives me a Twilight Zone vibe, but that could just be me. In Steven's birthday, Garnet turns down a Stella record, which is obviously an in-joke, although one could argue that this actually is a Stella, and she just has a different name in this world. There's the board games and the tests, which you saw in the intro to this segment, but what you didn't see are Steven's toys. In Steven the Sword Fighter, he's got toys which resemble Pikachu, Sonic, Cloud, and Guitaru Man, which I didn't know existed before I made this video. Meanwhile, in Future Vision, those toys which look like Optimus Prime, a different Sonic, Yoshi, and a Furby. Webby's Dictionary is obviously Webster's Dictionary, and Dandai may be a stand-in for Hyundai. Now let's finish up with everyone's favorite thing, food. Well, everyone except Pearl. Heinz Ketchup shows up in a few episodes, which isn't just the equivalent of Heinz Ketchup, but also references character designer Danny Heinz. There's an apple juice that appears in a few episodes, which is likely the equivalent of apple sidra, something I definitely wouldn't have known existed if it wasn't for the wiki. However, this sidra equivalent can't come from Taiwan like the real thing, since, you know, Taiwan isn't there. 
There's cheese thangs, aka Cheetos in the Cooking with Lion short, Amethyst chips and cat fingers reference Uts chips, there's Wawa in Mr. Universe which references the Wawa store chain, and last but certainly not least, Rhea Sugar in A Single Pale Rose which not only references Sugar in the Raw, but also the show's creator herself, Rebecca Rhea Sugar. Well there we have it, all the differences and similarities between Our Earth and Siemens. I probably didn't get everything so feel free to leave a comment about something I missed. Once again, thank you to the Steven Universe Wiki, and until next time, thanks for watching.